Ready? Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We call the meeting of the Libby County Board of Commissioners to order. Mr. Brown, has the meeting been properly advertised? Yes, sir, it has. Thank you, sir. Good to see everybody. Glad you could make it today. Um, let us stand now for our prayer and our pledge of allegiance. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come now to this place at this time. We ask you that you would show yourself in a mighty way that we may do as pleasing in that sight. Bless all those persons who give it their time and talent for the betterment of this community and communities everywhere. We ask you, O oh God, that you will continue to give us strength and endurance through this pandemic. We ask that you would touch those who <clears throat> has lost loved ones and who as loved ones perhaps in the hospitals or as we speak. And we thank you for those who have recovered. We ask you now, God, that you would remind us that you said you would never leave us, nor would you forsake us, and we are leaning on that promise. Bless now these people, God, who serve Liberty County uh, in every capacity from uh, the lowest to the highest. And God, we do that, we'd be careful to give our honor, the glory, and the praise. This we ask in Jesus Christ's name, we do pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Right on to business. Good afternoon, Commissioner Frazier. Afternoon. You let the record show he's late and then give him $25. <laughs> I see Commissioner Bullens was behind you. Um, Department of Reports, Finance, Ms. McGuffin. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have great news. <laughs> I have a, a couple good things. Uh, you should have your fiscal year end report and your July report. We'll start with the fiscal year end report. Um, you look at the very first page, you'll see that we actually achieved about 107% of our budgeted revenues. So we actually received, um, took in $2.3 million more than we budgeted. And with regards to expenditures, we spent only 98% of our budgeted expenditures. So in total, that gave us 2.9 million towards fund balance. Mm -hmm. We actually came out to the good. Mm -hmm. Let me just kind of describe for you a couple of things that uh, helped that. In our revenues, you can see um, in taxes, and taxes includes a lot of different accounts, but specifically in taxes, we uh, achieved about $1.1 million more in TAVT than we had budgeted. And I think that was because of the way that they restructured the disbursements. And unfortunately, I found out to, uh, this week, they kind of changed those again. So um, we're still gonna receive a good chunk, but we're not gonna receive as much. They kind of flipped the cities and the counties with inside the city limits. So mm -hmm. inside the city limits, we will get like 23% of TABT revenues and the, the cities will get 28%. And it used to be the other way around. But anyway, that 1.1 million was significant. Uh, we also brought in about $300,000 more in local option sales tax than we had originally budgeted. Mm -hmm. And then um, in prisoner housing, <laughs> we, brought, we brought in $400,000 more than we budgeted. So our revenues looked really good. We were able to add $2.9 million at the end of the year to fund balance great thing. Um, the only negative variance really significant in the expenditures, um, we went over in capital outlay, but as you know, we didn't budget any capital outlay. So that was to be expected and we were going to use fund balance if necessary. But as you'll remember, at the start of last year, we had to purchase the, I think the camera sound system over at the Justice Center, which was over $100,000. And then we ended up having to get a few vehicles, uh, one for data processing, one for mosquito control, and then a piece of equipment for the road department. But basically, those were the, the big items that kind of skewed your capital outlay. 
Um, but all in all, very good for the end of the year. Uh, at the end of the year, if you look at page two, our designated, our unreserved, undesignated fund balance was 5.6 months worth of operational expenditures, and a year ago, the same time, it was 4.9 months. So we did very well. Uh, in your departments, after I went through and tried to smooth some things out like I normally do, there was one department that actually went over budget, and it was in risk management. And that was a function of having to contribute a lump sum $800,000 payment to our defined benefit plan. I don't know if you all remember that. In, mm -hmm. in fiscal year 19, we had to contribute, I think it was $3.2 million. And then again last year, we had to contribute another $800,000. Um, we should be getting our actual actuarial report any day now so that we can see where we actually stand now. And as you know, when you passed your budget, we actually increased the employer contribution part of that so that hopefully in a year from now, we won't have that significant shortfall. <coughs> um, your solid waste operations ended up about $200,000 uh, net income after we went through and sh shored up the closure post closure accruals and your depreciation expense. So they still came out to the good as well. All of your special revenue funds uh, operated within their budgeted parameters. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and sales tax six, <coughs> both for uh, June and July, we exceeded the budgeted amount. So <coughs> at the end of June, we were only uh, $77,000 off mark for a total of three years. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. And at the end of July, we were down to only a $25,000 variance. So on a $54 million budget, thank you, on a $54 million budget, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Awesome. <clears throat> Especially during these times. I got something caught in my throat. <laughs> Especially during these times, Kim, you know? Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -mm. <clears throat> but if you go into Lowe's, it's like a grand opening every day in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you'll notice, I had, I think I had emailed you and Commissioner Stevens about your available road monies. You, you so they are updated. You and you can look in there. And right now, uh, District 1 has a little over $500,000. And the chairman has about four hundred and seventy-five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And I need four hundred and something thousand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you you, you had to take that up with him. <laughs> he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got that loud and clear. Mm -hmm. Um, that's it for June. I, I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, surprised. Mm -hmm. It's great news. It we did really well. We held within our. Our budget, um, saving us about 600000 came in over $2 million, uh, with our revenues. So it, it was a very good year, very good year. Good job. You know, um, and I've not heard any economists say that they predicted, you know, these kind of revenues during this pandemic time. It's no. It's a phenomenal, man, but it's... I, it's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> it really is. Um, then for July, of course, you know, this is a lean month. Mm -hmm. So, the, the, of course, the revenues, they're not going to start coming in. So, of course, you're going to see that so far we've only really? collected about 1% of our revenues and we've spent about 8% of our expenditures. So that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. You're going to do that. You're going to use your, your fund balance through the first couple of months of your fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of July, there was actually 4.8 months worth of um, operational expenditures in your undesignated, unreserved fund balance. So you went from 5.9 down to 4.8, but that's to be expected. And again, a year ago, you were at 4.9. A mm -hmm. um, couple of departments running ahead of schedule already. Elections, of course, they had that runoff, um, so they incurred a bunch of expenses up front. Your general admin fees, those are the fees that we pay 
uh, coastal Georgia regional development, and those are quarterly fees. We pay, actually it's an annual fee, we paid that all up front, so that's gonna skew that budget. Uh, Superior Court, we pay the law clerk expenses all up front in the first month instead of monthly, so that's why you kind of see a $14,000 variance. And then your circuit-wide public defender, those are paid a month in advance, so that's skewed as well. Kim, when it comes to the elections, mm -hmm. I know we try to um, project expenses for a runoff. <coughs> I'm just wondering if it's not those additional costs of machinery you know, the equipment they had to get. It is. It, it is. They had to buy, um, I think it was like 12 mobile security cages, a couple more desktops and monitors. So there were some expenses that they had to incur in addition to some overtime mm -hmm. um, that was incurred yeah. for that election. Um, you're in your roadways, of course, we made, we made, uh, a purchase, capital lease purchase of uh, pieces of equipment for the road department. And then your operating transfers for recreation and 911 that are in department 9000, which is other financing uses, those, um, that's running a little ahead of schedule too because 911 and recreation isn't really generating any revenues right now. And that 911 comes from the state. So there's kind of a delay on that as well but nothing to be alarmed about. It's normal for July. Solid waste right now at the end of July, operating at a net income of about 165,000. And um, none of the departments within solid waste are at a variance, a negative variance. Your, your 911 operations, um, they're in a variance right now because they had to pay $150,000 annual maintenance for uh, Motorola and that's a one-time payment up front that'll kind of skew that budget for a couple of months and then it'll even out. And then again, in sales, like I said, in sales tax six, if you look at the collections at the end of July, we are $25,000 off our mark on a $54 million budget. And I just think that's fabulous after three years. Somebody need to write us a check. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, that's all I have for the uh, fiscal year in and then for your July report. I do want to let you know uh, regarding the CARES Act uh, money, we got, we were awarded 1021000 I believe, mm -hmm. with an advance payment of 306000 We put together uh, a spreadsheet and compiled the financial documents to support that spreadsheet. We uploaded it. It passed the first review by DCA and was sent on to the Office of Planning and Budget for their review. I check about three times a day, mm -hmm. and it's currently it says decision in process. So it's been approved by the first step, and we're just waiting approval for the second step. As soon as that's approved, it'll open up the remainder 70%. And I've already got everything compiled, ready to go, ready to load up as soon as it comes available. All that has to be done by September 1st. And that was a real push, um, a real push to get that in and to get those compiled. Because if there's a problem with it and it kicks it back, you still only have until September 1st to get it squared away, get it back, loaded again, approved, any other further documentation they ask for or require. Um, again, until they open up the 70%. Mm -hmm. So everything is due by September 1st. So we've been working real hard to get mm -hmm. that done. Mr. Chairman, I, yes, I had a question. I don't remember uh, what the guidelines as far as how we, that money could be spent. So basically, they gave you specific things that were eligible to file mm -hmm. as supporting documents for that award because the, this is federal money given to the state and the state went ahead even though they didn't have to and awarded counties in Georgia 45 percent of what they got and then that money that 45 percent was distributed to all of the counties and then it was up to the counties to submit supporting documentation now one of the things that made it so nice 
is that they did allow us to use public safety payroll expense and benefits to submit. So even though we had a whole bunch of different expenses that pertain to COVID, whether they were in IT or elections or you know public safety, EMA, one of the things that the state said is that we will allow you to use public safety, basically road patrol, mm -hmm. um, EMS, EMA, fire, we, you can use those salaries and benefits to submit. So once we submit that, they go ahead and they give us our award. Now what we use it for. Mm -hmm. It just goes back in the general fund. It goes fund. back into the general mm -hmm. fund. I would suggest to you to hold off planning on what you do with it until we see what our digest does. Um, we were, when we approved the budget, we weren't sure if we were actually going to achieve some of those property tax numbers that we budgeted. So I would just um, caution you maybe to wait until we get the digest, take a look at it to see mm -hmm. if, we, if the digest will actually support the budget that you adopted with the current millage rate applied to it before you determine to use that million dollars for something else. Mm -hmm. That, would, that okay. would be my recommendation. All right. And a good one. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm yes, sorry. sir. Uh, now, uh, you said the use of the funds can be for, you did say road debt, <coughs> but not, not, but not, not to take. Not can be used. It said you could use the expenses of the road deputies. Road deputies. No, not the detectives, detectives, not your admin people, not narcotics. Uh, not your jailers, um, not 911, but so we we picked out by title mm -hmm. the individuals that we submitted for reimbursement. Kim, and, um, you mentioned earlier <coughs> recreation loss of revenue. <laughs> no, I'm headed. Does, does that qualify for reimbursement? No. no. Revenue replacement does not qualify. Yeah not qualify at all, not at all. The, the only good thing about not having that revenue is that we're really not incurring the same type of expenses yes. either. So it's kind of a yeah. It off. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, are you on the uh, solid waste authority? No, sir. I guess Mr. Brown is the only one. But, what, what I'm looking at, some of the uh, Recycle the garbage, the household garbage. How often are those uh, compactors replaced? I, I couldn't tell you. Um, I'd have to probably get with Kathy or Clinton to find out. It's uh, good that you mentioned solid waste, though, because we are right now currently engaged with Culbertson, um, <laughs> and we are in the final steps of our rate, um, what do you call it, our rate study, mm -hmm. both commercial and solid waste assessment rate. And matter of fact, I got off an email um, just giving them more information. Kathy and I, as well as Clinton, have been feeding them information and responding to questions and, and everything so that they could take a look at our rate structure and potentially the growth that we're going to see in the next five years, specifically around the Flemington area and how that could impact us and what we can and can't do with our current rate structure. Because There's know, been some uh, conversation. Because I know as a matter of fact, the one at All White is overused now. Mm. So that's one that, and that's one I'm talking about with the compactor. When they pick it up, I think when the blade is supposed to come all the way down to lock in, it's not doing it. And when they pick it up, it makes a mess. Mm. And nobody gets out of the truck and, I guess, picks Well, they, I, I see a couple of them get out every now and then from in there. They'll, then they have to go down there with their boots and shovel and, yeah, but that blade should come down and hold it back. Yeah. Um, I, I know part of that rate structure study is, uh, includes a capital replacement 
10-year project list. So uh, we'll be getting that soon. I'm guessing within the next two to three weeks, we'll get that final rate study and recommendation, and they'll probably want to come either here or virtually and present that to you, their findings and their suggestions. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions? Okay. As soon as I hear any more about the CARE stuff, um, as yeah. soon as I get word and, yes, and see that it is has been approved and that other 70% then is opened up, I will definitely send out a notice and let everybody know. But it was um, it's a good year. It's a good year. Mm -hmm. It's a good year, even with this COVID stuff. Even with the COVID. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Mr. Trent. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'll take this off so it's not quite so muffled. Um, if you look on the back of your package, we got a letter from uh, the state saying that the LMIG is uh, available this year. Um, the letter you got is from Russell McMurray. Uh, our formula amount this year is $353,676.72, and our local match is 30%. So. Uh, look in the districts. Uh, let me know what projects you would like to see, and then we'll compile a list and uh, bring it back to you with some recommendations on uh, how we can do some of this. So if you will, look, just let me know. Um, I would like to go ahead and apply for this early uh, so we can go ahead and get our money and get this get this going. Um, the Isle of Wight Fire Station um, is basically done. Uh, Clinton has to do a little bit of cleanup work before the uh, grand opening next week. He's going to move a little bit of dirt and a little bit of stone he needs to put between the existing stone and the concrete uh, parking pad we did out there. Um, other than that, it uh, looks really good. The building looks good. I got a couple of pictures in the pack that you can look at. Uh, if you want to go out and look at it, maybe we have a key. We can get you out, get you out there and get you in. Um, East End Fire Station is moving along. Hubbard & Hubbard is a contractor on that one, and they uh, right now they're on time. Uh, things are going well out there. Uh, Melvin Lane uh, showed a couple pictures in there, went out this morning. Uh, that project's looking pretty good. Uh, they've done a lot of the mucking and gotten out the, the bad dirt and put some good hard pan in for the subgrade, and they're working on that right now. Uh, Yeoman's Road, uh, the contractor uh, has a crew back out there today. Uh, we've been, they've been absent from the site for a couple of weeks, and we've been kind of standing on our head trying to get them back out there, and uh, they're back out there today. Uh, so they can feasibly finish the project on time, but we are pushing them really hard. Um, did I say that about Yeoman's Road? I meant 3rd Street. That was 3rd Street. No, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was about to say, I don't remember us voting on Yeoman's Road. 3rd Street. No, no. My mind no, went on. I about that one. I was, my, <laughs> my mind went from hmm. Melvin Lane to 3rd Street because that's, that's, that's what we're building. And uh, then I look back down and I'm like, and I also saw CenturyLink in there, and that, that threw me for a loop. Because one of the things on 3rd Street is uh, we do have a um, time delay that was caused by CenturyLink uh, that the contractor couldn't work. Um, I do have a 60-day uh, contract extension um, for them, uh, change order. There's no net change in the prices. Um, but I would like to go ahead and, and issue that time uh, extension to the contractor for that work, if that's okay with you guys. On Melvin Lane? On Melvin Lane, yes, sir. They're, they're making progress on it. They're they're not going to take the full 60 days, but... That know, line's not moved over? Say it again? Melvin Lane, that, you talking about to move the line over? Yes, sir. To move the Melvin, the Melvin Lane, we need to do a little 60-day contract extension. Okay. But yeah, the line's I've already I've everybody moved confused, over. and I apologize. Well, it's, it's real got flustered that, there. That Melvin Lane is still in District 4. That's, that's <laughs> kind of confusing. Well, it's, it's, it's been there ever since your first report on Melvin Lane. Well, need to do. It's consistent. Huh? Move, 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 move it to 5 when, when, you, when you get them. I've been there. trying to spend the other districts, man. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it in 1 after completion. Yeah, mm -hmm. after the census, it probably will be in 1. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Mr. Chairman, I'll... Yes, sir. I'll I'll make a motion that we um, uh, change the completion date of Melvin Lane from the 29th of August to the 28th of October 2020. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. Extend the dates <coughs> as uh, stated. Any further discussion? 
All in favor, raise your right hand, please. Those opposed? All right, you got more time, sir. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You on the trip? Uh, we just send plans out to everybody, uh, checking our utilities, make sure we weren't going to run into any utility complex. Um, don't have any real response back from CenturyLink. Um, we sent them a set of plans, certified mail. It, uh, it was sent back to us non-delivered, and we sent it to the Ryan Avenue address. Um, but we did, we were able to talk to their engineer, Chris uh, Saunders, and uh, we did hand deliver him a set of plans, uh, asking him to review them and let us know if we had any conflicts. Uh, we did talk to uh, Coastal EMC, and uh, we're good there. They had moved most of their uh, facilities outside of the right of way mm -hmm. uh, several, sometime last year. Yeah, last year they did. Yeah, so so they're out of the way. Um, we do have some water line that's kind of in the way, um, but we've, we're have we working with water utility management. Um, they know what's there and what needs to be moved. Um, we already talked about 3rd Street. They're back on it. That's, that project's moving again. Interstate Paper Road, uh, we, I provide you a little uh, kind of a status sheet on uh, where we are with that. Uh, we're kind of looking right now at the part of agency approvals. So we'll be working on that a little bit longer, trying to get that together. Um, Briarwood cir uh, Circle Drainage, which is a little canyon road off of Airport Road. I got some, uh, when they paved Airport Road, they kind of cut off some of the drainage and uh, we need to change some drainage to go to a uh, little ditch that's on the Development Authority's property. Uh, we got that drawn, uh, set up, and I'm trying to get myself uh, on the agenda, uh, probably the next meeting or next available meeting at the LCDA to talk about getting an easement so we can cut a ditch over there to their, connect to their drainage. Uh, everything will work well if that goes. Um, we did have to look at our impaired waters uh, plan. We do have an impaired waters uh, loop, Peacock Canal, and um, they call the Peacock Canal that goes up Alligator Branch is the impaired water stream that we have in Liberty County. Um, so we do have that plan. We've prepared it and sent it to uh, um, EPD for review. We also have some minor monitoring that goes along with it where we have to take samples of the water um, at the intersection of Old Hines Road or you know, the dirt road section where it crosses back there and we have to take some down uh, by Highway 17. Uh, those, we've done two samples this year and uh, both of them have come, up, come back well. So we're in good shape with that and, and that progress is moving well. Um, transfer station tipping floor. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know if, if y'all have been out to the transfer station when they, a truck shows up, they dump the truck on the floor and then they push the, with the backhoe into the top of the trucks and now, over years, that just wears that uh, concrete out. Uh, about 10, 12 years ago, we had replaced the surface. Um, and it's gotten so bad that Clinton's had to cut some uh, metal off tops of the chutes to get the uh, trash down into the trucks. So it's time to replace that concrete floor again. Um, so we have on the uh, streets now um, a plan to replace that floor. Basically what they'll end up doing is coming out and shot blast about an inch and a half of the concrete off and then report it. Uh, and it'll be the same type surface as what we have now. It's a very hardened concrete um, so that everything can just get pushed off. And hopefully that'll last us another 10, 12 years uh, to make that work. I uh, wish there was a product that we could make it last longer, but uh, that's the product we've found that makes it last the longest. I think when we first started this uh, station up here, we were having to, with the regular concrete or just a, a high end concrete, we were replacing it every three years or less. So, by doing this, it's extending our life out 10, 12 years. Is that out of the solid waste budget? Yes, yes sir. Sir. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's everything in my budget. I significantly got it all messed up when I was just ex explaining it to you. I hope I straightened it all out. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I need to go back. Let's go back to that fire station on All White Road. <clears throat> okay. Looking at this picture here, Mr. Brown, with the rocks in the front of the door. Yes, sir. What's going to happen if we get a heavy rain? Oh, we've already had several heavy rains, yes, and uh, it does fine. Is there a downfall on that concrete? <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> it, it all slopes away from the building. Slopes away from the building. Mm -hmm. All right, 
The next question is where the bathroom is at. Yes, sir. Are we going to put any kind of stop? <clears throat> a, a truck stop? Truck stop. The stop, the wheel the stop. <clears throat> um, I talked to uh, Darby. They may have some little uh, plastic stops that may stick in there. Um, but one thing that we did do early on is, as we had that thing framed, we took a truck over there, uh, one of our larger trucks, and backed it in there to make sure everything fit. Mm -hmm. And um, it does fit, and it goes in well without running into the building um, or into the bathroom. So he was going to try to put something to keep people from backing in um, on his side. There was not anything physical that we were building into the building for that. But that, that should be a must. Okay. Yes, sir. I, I'll, I'll discuss it with him. Yeah. Because they, they make several plastic things that right. you can kind of mm -hmm. put on the floor mm -hmm. that, that will do that. Okay. Now, back to interstate, or either DS, but it's still interstate road. It's still interstate paper. <laughs> still interstate road. Right now, we're looking at a, what? A million dollars out of East Blush, right? Yes, sir. So that leaves us about 1.6 short. Yes, sir. And with Riceboro saying what they have to say, and they yes. have nothing. And D.S. Smith is not. D.S. Smith to saying that they have nothing. Sound like we don't have nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do <clears throat> what well, we, interstate paper road get one million dollars worth of work? We we did have a meeting um, with the um, um, one of our Hampo groups with uh, Rob McCall, the district engineer, a couple weeks ago, uh, where we pitched what we were doing and told him that we would probably be coming to talk to him about some money so that they're aware of what we're looking for. Uh, and we told them that we would uh, appreciate any uh, additional Elbing money uh, if that became available to help make this project go. So we're, we're already talking to DOT for additional funds to try to help get this project going. Because I remember the last couple of projects that I that we did on that road uh, when I was employed down there. Interstate did participate yes, sir, in it. And I know it's different management now, <clears throat> but uh, still, uh, like they mentioned to us in the meeting, that they have 600 employees, or uh, 400 employees, I'm sorry, somewhere down there. But how many of those employees actually live in Liberty County? And that's an answer that I'm waiting on from the development authority, Mr. Chairman, because you're on that board. Mm -hmm. We'll see if you can expedite that list. We want to see how many actual employees down there since we are putting out this kind of money, although it's a county road, but we still want to see, I, I would like to see how many employees down there are actually from Liberty County. Is it, that yes. price you have, that's the, that's the value engineer price, sir? Well, the, the $2.6 million yes, on that sir. one? Yes, sir. Yeah, because we uh, our initial price was over five million dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We we went and we explored several different options a way to tackle that, mm -hmm. um, and uh, this by far was the the least expensive route. Mr. Chair, I, I guess that is a, a valid question. So, uh, if if the other entities uh, pull out or don't participate uh, financially, what do we do? Give them one, one million dollars worth of work. I mean, what is that? Just resurfacing and keep it moving? Well, yes, sir. What we're going to do is kind of look at different options of where a million dollars would take you. I don't think and and, the, way, and the, way that we, the way we're planning on doing this makes it hard to make that happen because what we're trying to do is use the existing uh, pavement and subgrade as our base for what we're doing because there's some good structural strength there. You know, however, it's a number of years old and the design for it wasn't for the number of trucks that are coming across it today. It was designed for about half the number of trucks that are coming across it today. So what we're trying to do, instead of just tear everything down and that rebuild, which would be about a $5 million job, <clears throat> right. we're trying to use that so obviously when I do that, everything gets built up, and I build my shoulders up. And, you know, I'm adding six inches of asphalt on top of that asphalt that's out there now. So when I make a change, then I've got a section that I've got to remove and make a grade change, which 
shortens the amount that we can do because I've got to do the what I would normally be doing in a five million dollar project in a short section to make that grade change. Right. So you, you got some challenges there in not doing it all at one time. So it's not like you just oh it's no problem we just go a million dollars. Oh and you know it's a 2.6 million dollar job so we're going to go you know 30 percent of the, of the road. You know you're you're going to go more like less than a quarter of the road for that million dollars when you do it that way. Right. And uh, and I see the uh, development authority, I guess, what uh, doing a grant application as well? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Right. So uh, I guess the question that I have, since we have so many different entities on this particular project to make a whole, if none of them, uh, I guess, proceed farther, where do we go? And also, I mean, how long do we keep this project on the list? Right. Or we, I mean, we'll is there a timetable to hear back from D.S. Smith or a timetable to hear back from the development authority or, or any of the entities? Or well, one of the things we were looking at doing um, was uh, trying to explore what it would take to get to um, more detailed cost and, and, you know, to get a cost that is, uh, more from a contractor standpoint instead of an engineer's estimate. Um, kind of like what you do with some, some DOT projects for you know, what the LCDA has done. A lot of cases, they'll get their plans to a contract <coughs> phase, which is about 70% complete plans, um, and then go out there and get prices from several contractors like your RB Bakers or your Baker contractors mm -hmm. or some of the, the guys that do a lot of this big work. Um, and that way you can see what your price really is. You know, we, we have a good idea what it is based on our engineering estimates, based on our historic pro projects, but, you know, to get something that's more planable, uh, we did look at what it would take to do that. So, you know, it takes about $112,000 $112, to get to that point that we've got everything we need to do to get to that number. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's going to cost us to wherever we go. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just... I'm just wondering, you know, I, I know you all have had multiple meetings and everything. Just mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure. It, it just it just stays on the list, and I know it's not free to stay on the list, right? So, so uh, we're, we're we're trying to make it work. It just mm -hmm. sometimes it takes it takes a while to to make the project come to fruition, right? So that's what we're trying to do. All right. Other than that, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Listen to you. Thank you. Yeah, government agreement hospital bond, Mr. Trey Monroe. Yes, sir. Actually, Mr. David Lucas is here, and Mr. Trey Monroe is on the telephone. Is he? He's on the phone with us. I am. Thank you. Good. Yep. <laughs> Let me take this off. Please do. So you can hear me. <laughs> um, we uh, came to you early in July with a proposal that interest rates have declined enough that you could refinance uh, the uh, hospital authority bonds that were issued in 2012 and 13. Uh, we spent a good bit of time with the hospital authority and with the attorneys and we've uh, worked out a, a refinance for that issue uh, that'll be a, a placement with Ameris Bank. We went to a number of different financial institutions and it appears that Ameris, uh, they do own the 2017 bonds and they gave the best proposal to refinance. Uh, we looked at possibly doing it on a public basis, which have been a new rating and going through the rating process. But um, in this pandemic, the, uh, any financing that has hospital on it gets a lot of extra scrutiny. In fact, one of the rating agencies put, has put all hospital bonds along with airport bonds and some infrastructure on a, a negative watch. So mm. it makes sense to, to do it with Ameris. Uh, we're able to achieve the savings of about $900,000 over the life, which is, goes out 12 years. Uh, it'll be about $11.5 million, um, and the interest rate will be 1.9% down from a, a rate of 297, so saving a little over 1%. Uh, what you have tonight is a, a resolution prepared by the county attorney and by bond council that will authorize the county to enter into a contract which just renewed your contract that you had on the 12 and 13 to levy and collect under the hospital authorities law <coughs> uh, amount to pay the bonds to back them up. But uh, that's ready for your adoption tonight. 
Uh, the contract is not actually on that. It'll be drawn up after the authority meets, the hospital authority meets next Tuesday. And if they approve everything, they'll start validation, but it will authorize you to, to go ahead and enter into that contract. Uh, that's the first resolution. Uh, the second one uh, pertains to the Public Facilities Authority for the Justice Center bonds. Uh, the county originally built that uh, back in uh, <coughs> a bond issue in 2009. It was a little over uh, $20,700,000. Yeah. And the rate was a good rate at the time, 4.15%. Um, in 2009, we were able to refinance <coughs> uh, the balance at that time, which was sixteen million eight at a rate of 262. Um, this issue is a shorter maturity. The final maturity is um, uh, 2028. Uh, when you refinanced in 09, you shortened the maturity and you started paying off bonds faster since rates were lower and you were using sales tax dollars. Uh, this will actually save hopefully a little over $100,000 a year, $850,000. Uh, this will be a public issue. It's backed by sales tax, so there's a dedicated uh, source of revenues to pay it off, so we think we can get a, a very good rating, and um, the interest rate will actually be under 1%, we believe. Mm. But uh, this is ready to move forward. Uh, the resolution you have here is to ask the Public Facilities Authority, who is the actual issuer backed with the, uh, with the county contract and the pledge of the sales tax monies, uh, to actually authorize or ask them to issue the bonds. Um, and we'll get that to them about 1st of September. Um, and that issue should be able to close in mid-October. Uh, the hospital authority issue will be closed by September 22nd. We have two different resolutions, and if they pass tonight, we'll continue to work with the, uh, your local councils and with bond council to get it completed. Mr. Chairman, I had a question. I just wanted to make sure, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but the hospital, what, does that mean it'll be paid off in 12 years? Yes, or yes, in 12 years, the hospital debt will be paid? Yes, ma'am. And then the um, Justice Center is eight years? Yes, ma'am. So that was? Um, 2028. 2028. You, you originally issued the bonds in uh, 2009 <laughs> was the first issue. So yeah, on 20, the Justice 20 years would have been... And it was a 20-year financing. That would have been 2029. It's going to actually pay off a year. A, a year early. Okay. And just for the hospital authority, when that debt is paid, Mr. Brown, that uh, obviously is the commissioner's property. Um, I mean, it's been a long time coming. we still got some years, but... No, I don't... Who, how, how does that... I don't know, ma'am. The, the title. title wouldn't yeah. actually be... And David can address how the bondholders are doing that, but the, the title wouldn't transfer. The title's mm -hmm. still in the hospital authority. The, the, hospital the title authority stays does in the not hospital. go away. It's still the hospital mm -hmm. authority, but we, the, we, debt, the we, contract with the county would go away. In other the words, con the contract between the hospital authority and the, and the commissions... Mm -hmm. and would go away after it's paid off. It, it pertains under the hospital authority's law in Georgia, which is a very good law, and thank goodness we've had it for all these years. It allows counties to levy and collect up to seven mills on your digest to support health care in your community. Um, and a lot of counties, of course, it, it pays for indigent care. It pays for the, all the necessities that, that you have to have to operate a hospital. But in this particular case, you can have that contract out and it can be pledged to pay off debt. But this original, I guess it goes back to the mid late 90s, and I can't remember whether it was 96 or 98, that you issued debt to build the existing hospital in its present location. It was over on 84. 84, okay, it was over there. Moved to the new location, 25 beds. In 2000, and 12, at the end of 2012, you issued uh, 13,000,007, which was to add the emergency room, add the mm -hmm. second floor, and do all the renovations. And that was a 20-year deal. So the two the due debt portions that are out there are the original debt uh, that pays off in 27, and then the money that you borrowed in 12 and 13. You actually, the hospital authority has a one-year debt service reserve. It's about a million six, 
it actually pays the last bond. So technically, the bonds could be paid off in 31 or 11 years. Okay. So there's a one-year debt service reserve. I know that's a lot of numbers, but uh, it's, in, it's in good shape. And the good thing is you're going to be at an average interest rate of just under 2% on the hospital debt and under 1% on the justice center. What does it mean, one more question, what does it mean by refunding does not extend the term of the existing debt? And I think you have that on both of those bonds. Yes, ma'am. So in other words, you're, you're refinancing the debt, but we're not extending the 32 maturity. That's the final maturity in the hospital debt. And we're not rescind, rescind, extending the 28 maturity on the Justice Center. Okay, okay. We're not stretching it out. No, sir, you're not stretching it out. It's a okay. true refinance and it's, you know, true savings. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good questions. You have a motion? Chair, let's say we need to do these individually. Uh, yes, sir. Please. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to accept the, re the resolution for the mm -hmm. hospital authority bonds. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Which in a second, is that the resolution of hospital authority refinance? What's the amount on that, Commissioner? Uh, it's going to be about $11.5 million. Okay. Any further discussion? The only thing I would ask in, as far as further discussion, if we do become successful, if it's not us or the next board or whoever, we can pay this off early. Uh, yes, sir. The, um, because to get the 1.9% rate on the hospital bonds, right. there is a three-year call protection so that you don't call them before three years. But that's only on the 12 and 13. You could call some of the 17s. Mm -hmm. um, and on the county issue, um, we, haven't, we haven't gotten a call provision on that. It could be that we have to give a call, pro call provision to keep that rate out there. Rates have fallen. It's amazing that they've fallen this far, but yeah. we may end up be able to get the best interest rate. We may have to give a, a short a call short protection. Little, little guarantee, yeah. Not likely, okay. but we might. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Good question. All right. All in favor of uh, approving the hospital resolution? <clears throat> okay. All right. Now for the uh, Justice Center. You entertain a motion. I'll entertain that motion if you'll let me make it, Mr. Chairman. I, okay. I think we ought to move forward with this. I can't believe we can get interest this cheap. So. <laughs> <laughs> I second the motion. Motion well, second. We approve the resolution <clears throat> to refinance the hospital bonds. Any further discussion on that? Mr. Derek, anything you want to add? You, want, you just want to see all the hands go up? All I'd like to say is we would love to be able to pay it off sooner if y'all want. Uh, <laughs> We would, we would. That's how it go. All in favor, raise your right hand. All right. Both pass, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Tell Mr. Monroe he did well on the phone. <laughs> very quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Trey. Thank you. I Thank you, Derek, it. for being here. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. While we're on a roll, come on, Miss Thompson. She's bringing the money. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Good Melanie morning. Thompson, mm -hmm. and I would like to thank uh, the Liberty County Board of Commissioners and Chairman Lovett for inviting me today to discuss the good things that the Liberty County Community Housing Development Organization has done thus far in the community. What is a CHOTO? A CHOTO is a community housing development organization, a nonprofit that has a special designation of home funds. And these funds are used to help advance affordable housing initiatives, adv advise organizations to make decisions in regards to design, development and management of home assistant and home eligible affordable housing developments. Why Liberty County? The CHOTO makes up of the Housing Authority, the Liberty County GIC organization, and the residents that reside in affordable housing. It was developed to promote partnerships 
within the state of Georgia, units of local development, and other nonprofit organizations. It is geared to help expand affordable housing, decent, safe housing and development. It also has the ability to provide more funding for affordable housing with a 15% set aside of home allocations for housing development. It also provides a financial assistance for residents and it helps provide especially funding for the incorporated and unincorporated areas in Liberty County. The CHOTA was formed um, specifically uh, with the formula in the selection of the board members to make up um, three members of the Housing Authority, members of low-income communities, members of the Liberty County GIC organization, and we also have a member of the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Mm -hmm. As a board, the board was involved in developing the mission, the vision, and the branding. The CHOTO was formed in 2018, and the mission is to provide diverse housing opportunities in Liberty County, Georgia through the development of economically sustainable communities and self-sufficient citizens. The vision is making Liberty County, Georgia better through daily development of community and the citizens. The first project we're proud to say was finished and completed at the end of July. Thank you, Chairman Lovett, for your attendance and speaking at the grand opening. Those homes, next slide. Those homes, those two homes, the Chapman homes, were, was our first project. The individuals that would qualify for those homes would have to have a, at least a 650 credit score at least $35,000 annual income. The mortgage payments would be between five to $700, and those homes are at least 1,600 square feet. And the general contractor did an awesome job, Legacy Homes, in our representation and presentation of our first project. The CHOTA organization must develop and create a history of service in regards to the home assistance and the home funds and also employ a staff that has the capacity and capability of carrying out affordable housing development. That's why the Housing Authority was <clears throat> an intricate part of forming the CHOTO. Our final goals, our future goals include to enhance municipal awareness and relationships to develop unincorporated areas in Liberty County, and finally, to increase home ownership opportunities that increase the local tax base and ensure self-sufficiency. Our final, our upcoming project will be um, senior rehab in unincorporated areas in Liberty County by accessing federal funds, grants, and donations. And we would love to partner and invite anyone that would like to volunteer and participate in our future endeavors. We thank you so much for your support, and we will love to come back and continually update the board on what we will be doing in the future. Any questions? Well, I, you, you didn't say that you need to have a six figures credit score, did you? <laughs> no, you just 650 credits, 650 for your credit score. Oh, okay, I got to qualify for the application. We have so many people that okay. are interested. Yeah, I, I, I thought you said six <laughs> figure. You said 650. Mm -hmm. 650. Yes. <laughs> no, I was going to say that yes. house, that house is kind of small. I don't know. To have a credit score Your credit score has to be no. 650. Okay. Six, we have a lot of interested okay. local um, 
people that are interested, applications are pending, and these two homeowners will go in with equity in those. What, I mean, that, yes. like that project in Riceburg, I mean, is there um, anything like that going to happen up here in Hinesville that, that you know of? Not that I'm aware of, but it, the opportunities are endless. Mm -hmm. And with COVID-19, we, we are just trying to prepare for the inevitable and in knowing that housing, affordable housing is needed throughout the county and the city of Hinesville. Yeah, because I, I know um, in my old neighborhood of um, Gulf Street and Rebecca, well, not Rebecca Street is pretty much built out, but on Gulf Street, yes. um, from Bethel Church up toward um, General Stewart, I, I know some guys that, um, you know, they inherited that land and they, they tore the old house down and they was looking for, um, you know, some help uh, having a house built on, on their property. So okay. I, I don't know. Well, if you are in knowledge of or know anyone that would like to partner with the Chodo or the Housing Authority, mm -hmm. we would be glad to have those conversations. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did I hear you say you're going to pursue, I'm sorry, uh, Go ahead. Go. renovation projects? Did I hear you? Yes. Our next project will involve seniors that live in the unincorporated right. area of Liberty okay. County that need help and assistance with the rehab of their homes. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you for saying that. I've, I've long been, uh, <clears throat> what's the word, a proponent that everybody shouldn't have to move into Hinesville to have nice housing. Yes. Right. If I'm, if my, if I was raised in the country, I should be able to have a nice house in the country. Sure. Why should I leave my property or my family property and have to come to the metropolis of Hinesville to find decent, decent housing? Mm -hmm. In fact, it does me better to stay around my family unit yeah. mm -hmm. and to leave my family unit and go even into Hinesville. Yes. So anything we can do, whether it be seniors or young people, mm -hmm. <clears throat> to help them to stay in the, in the less urban area. I think it's a plus all the way around. And of course, you may, you know, you've been there. We, we've been talking about blight in Liberty County, and yes. and this certainly ad addresses that. <clears throat> but uh, I'm reminded, too, of a conversation from a lady from, happy from Walter who asked about, is there any funds to help with my mama's house? That's what she said. Mm -hmm. so this, this will help us move forward in addressing those municipalities who have the want to and willingness to address the needs in their communities and know that we will be glad to partner with them. Mm -hmm. And I remind everybody about our conversation, the county doesn't do housing, but we collaborate with those that do house. Right. You know, so. And I'd like to thank you, uh, Chairman, because I've seen you since the end of July about two or three times yeah. at yeah. our functions. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Commissioner Stevens and Mr. Commissioner Gilead, he did. You just really support um, affordable housing as we move forward. So thank you. I promise you, when you say incorporate Liberty County, whether we are a city or a rural yeah. commission, we all support it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We all support it. We, we take off that hat. There's no city versus rural, and we just all commissioners right. <coughs> supporting uh, affordable and decent housing for all of our citizens of Liberty County. No one should be locked out. No. Uh, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. Ms. Thompson. Yes. This is your first time visiting us, right? It is, and I, it was a pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> what? <clears throat> this is going to be an easy question. Okay. Contribution. What, are you, what does it take coming from the county to contribute toward this program? I mean, funding or just uh, being, being there for support? Or funding, of course, support. Okay. Excellent. Um, engaging others to participate and volunteer. Um, all of those components matter in reference to providing affordable housing. So it's, of course, it's money, but it's also being there to say, we're here, this is the agency in which we partner with, and we would want to move forward because they're doing a good job in the community. This is more like, let's say, the uh, GET program? Yes. Like what we are, we're all on to now? Yes. Oh, okay. And those How much collaborations. Money? Mm -hmm. How much money? Well, actually, 
No, he's, he's, out of order. He, he's out of order. He's out of order. He's out of order. Okay. I, I, I was going to say, hey, uh, commissioner, commissioner from District 1 has all the money. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll talk later. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've had conversations. Yes, we, we, we have. We've been yeah. doing something. Yeah. Yeah. No, but Mr. Chairman, we're working into this. Budget. Whatever we need to do, let's see whatever we can we do to contribute to Making this organization shine. She, she made a request. Yes, I did. <laughs> but, okay. but she's being very diplomatic. And she, yeah. she let mm -hmm. us work through the, what's the word, Jerry, the process and getting agreements in order. Like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. <laughs> Chairman, while, while she's here, Ms. Thompson's here, you know, Chairman McIver really, I, I, I've always thought he was a forward thinker and, um, when we decided this board to, to build the water tower, there was a couple of a family, a man and his wife and two or three more, and they were talking about clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. adds that adds to a community more than people right. mm -hmm. give credit for. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes, sir. Now I think we're involved in seeing affordable housing in the county and other things and I am I honestly believe that that would be one avenue that we can spend a little bit more energy on is expanding where we've got water at. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that, that provides one basic need, uh, even though they do have a piece of property, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, you know, that's something that is very important that they have clean drinking water, proper septic systems and mm -hmm. things like that. So. Right. I think we're already involved in it. We don't realize how much we're involved in it. Um, and I know the building and inspections, um, you know, they, they go just as hard as they can to help, you know, anybody with, uh, with the needs. The, um, the, the question that I had was on your construction here, do y'all have to follow any type of state guidelines as far as it has to be bid mm -hmm. out to the lowest Yes, center. yes. Do you really? Very strict. strict. Very strict. The home funds is really one of the most complex, most confining federal programs as far as funding is concerned. Mm -hmm. So, yes. You have to bid them out and make sure they're all. Yes. I'm just Here. wondering, you know, the, the project that President Carter had, Habitat, um, I didn't know if that was you know, if that mirrored anything like what you're no. doing or not. Mm -mm. Okay. It's, it's totally different. But I did appreciate what you said about what each partner can bring to the table mm -hmm. to make it happen is significant. And you wouldn't have a home without water. Mm -hmm. Well, so. and people right. don't understand a lot of times how much the your home shallow well is probably contaminated. And the next thing mm -hmm. is... Uh, you know, that's a power bill. Mm. Then you got to worry about five years down the road when lightning strikes, and then there goes your well. And mm. when it's cold, the well freezes. And the <laughs> and way we've worked this thing, right. it's yeah. been real good. In the, and I know in the Homestown areas, and the people that's got it is, you know, it's basically a valve they cut on and off, and you don't have to worry about it. It's under the ground. They can go there when it's cold or when it's hot. And they're going to have clean drinking water. So... Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, I, I t I've always said, you know, that was one project that Mr. McIver wanted, and mm -hmm. of course he didn't want his name on the tower, and that's the reason <laughs> it on there. Mm -hmm. We told him we'd put the name on there if he'd got up and paint it, but he wouldn't climb the tower. So. <laughs> but it's, uh, I think we are all connected yeah. and, and yeah. interested in seeing. I'm just like the chairman. If I had 10 acres yeah, in man. McIntosh, I mm -hmm. wouldn't want to be, um, you know, Mm -mm. They'd have to Absolutely. leave there. A couple, of, yeah. couple of more dollar stores down there, or something that I would never come to. Town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. But I appreciate what you do. Thank oh, you. thank you so much. And I'm sorry I hadn't attended it because this is the first time I've ever seen you, and okay. I didn't know we was go we were doing it. I know where the buildings are at in the Chapman community, but mm -hmm. I didn't. Beautiful have spot. any idea whose it was? Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. Donald's was. keeping it all a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Thompson. Yes. What is uh, the one that we, the celebration you had the other day, uh, what's your capacity at that facility now? Is it coming up? Well, the we, one? Uh, Liberty Landings, that mm -hmm. is yeah, okay. a senior community right, yeah. for uh, 55 and older. Mm -hmm. uh, 
all-inclusive utilities with rents ranging from 780 to 980, no, uh, no assistance, um, but it's affordable based on the demographics that we market it to. Okay. Yeah, that's all inclusive. Is that yes, yeah. with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Wi yeah. The only thing I what was it, the cone operated. Laundromat? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. That's the old Gabriel house. That's a way of giving back. Mm -hmm. It is. Put, mm -hmm. Putting money back into the oh, organization. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. We, we, we'll program you again. We okay. found, as, long yes. as, you, as long as you report like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Listen, uh, at, at your leisure, give Mr. Brown a, a, a good observation of Commissioner Walker so he can tell you those areas where we have put the water systems in. If you're not familiar, then, then you'll know, you know. Let me look at those areas. Mm -hmm. Thank you again for coming. And Ms. Georgia, good to see Ms. Georgia. Uh, Ms. Chair. No, uh, I don't know the last time you rode through uh, Ricewell, mm -hmm. but they're building some massive houses out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me, me and Commissioner Gillard go to there, what, twice a week? When we at least twice a week. That's what I mean. They're really growing down there. Yeah, they're, 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 they're young folks, young right. folks say, Ricewell, when it come up? Man, they, hey. <laughs> yeah, whenever, we, we try to go after every county commission meet where we can get a pass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. what it's saying, man. Hey. Yeah. They never invited me to ride I'm with I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that about unincorporated Liberty County, especially. Right. Yeah. Mr. Brown, you were going to say something? There, there, there were a couple of things that you had asked to be reported on tonight. And those, mm -hmm. One of those departments is here, and Mr. Davis is waiting on the phone, too. I think Mr. Davis, okay. you right. want him to give an update on the new governor's yeah. order. Okay, sir. We kind of missed them in the department stuff, so okay. Martin was here to address I, the I, issue. I, I, some of that, I just thought I, I just thought I hadn't got to him yet on the agenda. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's do the analysis. Then, Mr. Martin, you we bring you up next. Okay. okay. Mr. Mosley, actually, I'll kind of let him run with that. He gave you a synopsis of of the proposals we received on on uh, two ambulance units. You may remember we had contracted for one. And the company in the middle of the COVID epidemic closed the doors, and so we had to go back out. When we did, uh, we actually okay. proposed for two. Uh, just as a reminder, these would be paid for out of the Splash 6 proceeds. I will note, after he goes over that, that they do, so the prices of the units obviously have gone up. There's not, there's no substantial changes in this unit versus the one you bought last time. However, the price is about $20,000 more per unit. Uh, the orders will have to be put in. There are none on hand. Both, both met the specs, um, and I'll be quiet. Let Mr. Mosley take that. <laughs> <laughs> jump in, Joe. Jump in. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the board, we received um, RFPs from six vendors, and if you'll notice on the sheet, on the spreadsheet, um, we bid it for two ambulances. We were as high as. Uh, 471 from FPNG of New York, I mean, of New Jersey, uh, to the lowest one of custom uh, truck and bodywork of Woodbury, Georgia. Um, in, in terms of the scoring, there was a three-member uh, three scoring panel. And we reviewed all of the proposals, and we would like to recommend um, custom truck and bodywork of Woodbury, Georgia, with the highest score of 102 to be awarded this contract. And that's a complete unit. There's no modif no nothing we have to do. It'll come in, ready to roll. R ready to roll. Actually, uh, when the unit gets on hand, um, units get on hand. When they have the chassis before they stock start box build, they'll contact uh, Mr. Lambeth. Uh, they will actually go there uh, to examine things as part of the process. There'll be a customized box paint that's done on it, but. Then in the end, before the units are, are picked up, they will go back again uh, for a look. So uh, again, everybody felt we have used custom before. We've had mm -hmm. problems with custom. Their delivery's been good. The waiting game will be on the chassis. Right. So they are 2021 Dodge chassis. Dodge. Dodge. Okay. Right. Mr. Chairman, oh. you ready for a motion? Ready for a motion. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I make a motion. We approve the two ambulances. From Custom Truck and Body Works of Woodbury, Georgia, $373,676. Second it. 
Motion and second to reset the bid from custom <coughs> truck and body work. 373 676. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, <laughs> that's the EPA on them. What, what is that? You're All in favor, raise your hand. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, we'll get that. So uh, what what everybody quotes now, because they can't control the chassis delivery time right. from, from whether it's Ford or Dodge, they give a 90-day after chassis delivery time. Okay. After. Mm -hmm. Well, just let us know that. when they come in. All right. You good, sir? <laughs> that right. you, you know. How many trucks would that put in your fleet oh. now? I don't think I Robert, did. Some, some, everybody hadn't met you, sir, that they're letting me know that you might want to come to the podium and introduce yourself. He's the new EMS. Did he say eight? Eight. I think he said yeah. eight, but he's new. That's the new Sean. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. So my name is Richard Lane, <laughs> and I've been in EMS since 86. I uh, started as a volunteer. Uh, I was offered the job here and I'm excited about it. And I actually close on my house here in Liberty County, three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You do that. Right. Right. Well, I'm looking County. forward to moving to the community and yeah. you know, uh, being on the water and watching the marsh in the morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, District uh, one. Incorporated. District one. Incorporated. Uh, yeah. West First Street. Or East, uh, East First Street, sorry. Uh, East no, First Street. Yeah. That's Pat. Okay. That's Pat. That's Pat. Uh, well welcome. Thank you. My question was, it's not how many, will this give you, you said eight units? So we currently have eight units, okay. two of which are at the end of their service life. One is 360,000, I think the other one's around 315, I think if I remember off the top of my head. So those units are pretty much toast. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're you, we, do, we don't obviously treat them as easily as a personal, personal car because of the fact that we crank them up cold, run them hard to get to where we're going, you know, then shut them down, that sort of thing. Uh, but the units that y'all are buying and have bought in the past, the Cummings diesel with the Allison transmission mm -hmm. is pretty much the Cadillac of drivetrains. I mean, okay. they're pretty much bulletproof. Right. So um, these are excellent units, and I think that they'll serve the community well. I have a question. Uh, Mr. Lennon, how long, how long have you been here? Uh, about eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. I, I met you a few weeks ago on email, <laughs> um, but and I appreciate your your help with that um, with that situation too. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Look forward Thank to you. having you here. Uh, let's let's bring Mr. Martin up while we're talking about the Schumann Center. Let's roll that all into one. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Thank Gentlemen, you. Mr. Mm -hmm. Swift, mm -hmm. um, I guess I was asked to be here tonight to uh, discuss concerns about the, the amount of usage we're having at the basketball course at Liberty Independent Troop Park. Um, and in starting that discussion, I would, I would note that yes, we are seeing, uh, had a gradual increase in the amount of usage there since we reopened those courts. I think initially we had uh, Pretty good observance of the guidelines that were set forth for use of the facilities, and uh, but I guess with a lot of people, you know, they're they're getting antsy about not being able to do the things they normally do, and and that amount of usage has has increased quite a bit uh, in recent weeks. Uh, typically on a weekday afternoon, you can see anywhere from 20 to 30 individuals out there playing basketball. Weekends, that number probably can go even higher. As a matter of fact, we even had a uh, what appeared to be a military unit there the other day in the morning when we got there at daylight playing basketball. Um, one thing to consider there, I think, is that, you know, basket, for one thing, the courts are right there by the highway. They're very visible. I would note that we have had this problem off and on at several of our facilities, just not quite as noticeable. Um, the other thing is about basketball, you can't play basketball and socially distance. And Commissioner the, the Dillard desire, and I can. The desire is to play, the desire of those individuals using those courts is to play basketball. So they're playing five on five full court basketball. There's no way to, to socially distance in that scenario. So similar situations we've had on football field, batting cages, baseball fields. Um, you know, we have tried to advise those individuals or groups that you know, hey, you know, we're, we, we're not going to come out here and police this issue with you guys. We're going to try to advise you to do what's right. And um, we're asking you to do social distancing. Um, we, we will not approve any event or gathering of more than 50 people, which is all in line with the executive order from the governor. And um, I think that we're doing what we were asked to do when we reopened the facilities, um, but I don't think there is 
a lot of ways, a lot of control over over the the type usage that we've been seeing. Um, Joe, I was trying to think to know the governors. I should have brought a copy. I think his executive order may have gone back to less than fifty. Yeah, and I think Mr. Ryan, I didn't bring it either. I, if Kelly, if Kelly is still there, he's not. I am. You, you, hey, hello, sir. Do, do you do you know whether the governor's order lessened the amount that could be uh, <coughs> congregated at one time in public? No, I, I think uh, the governor's order is fairly consistent with the last version, uh, with the important exception that he did, as expected, uh, recognize the authority of local governments to control the terms of entry into their property, and that includes our parks. Um, if you folks remember the, the current order, which is now confirmed as enforceable and valid by the governor, it, it applies to all buildings of the county. It does not apply to our parks, but only to the extent that social distancing is, um, is permissible, is, is achievable. So, uh, you know, if you would ask me, I would think that a basketball game can't be uh, played while observing social distancing requirements imposed by the CDC. So should the, should the uh, department wish, I think they can restrict or forbid uh, basketball games on, on the courts until further notice. Essentially, with respect to recreation, you know, sporting events in particular, the board has the discretion under our order to allow games or not upon a determination that can be played safely uh, and recognizing appropriate social distance and other precautions. So there may be some sporting events or recreational activities where that's possible, but basketball may not be one of those. But that's the determination the department can make, and they're free to further restrict playing in those courts under our existing order. And that's what I would have, have uh, interpreted as well. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, you know, I think our I think our decision uh, of the board, your, this board, was that we were not going to conduct organized activities, mm -hmm. uh, and we have not, of course, mm -hmm. since then. Um, these are, you know, pickup games. They're not. A, it's not really an organized activity, mm -hmm. but you can't conduct those and do or do those without a, and observe social distancing requirements. Mm -hmm. and before I chime in, go ahead and let you. Well, no, I mean, um, and. Uh, I, I made, uh, I brought it to the chairman's attention. Um, a friend of mine was going up to Popeye's over the weekend and he, he called and said, man, you know, this is, you know, um, it's a lot of people out there. And um, so I got with the chairman first thing Monday and I'm, which is why we actually to come here. But, and I, I guess the difference is if we cancel fall sports, which is league play and, and the only difference between that and what's happening down there at the park playing basketball is that there, there's no referee and they don't get trophies at the end of the season. But the danger, the reason that we cancel uh, league activities would be the same reason that I think that we need to consider doing something about that activity. I mean, it's a, it's a county funded park, it's a county park and the activities are very much the same, other than the things that I just mentioned. Um, so, you know, that's just my thought. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I would add that we've had a number of groups request permission to conduct organized activities similar to what we would normally do, mm -hmm. and we have denied those requests right. because, you know, this this board has determined those were not mm -hmm. safe to do. And I, and I know over there um, in my old neighborhood um, at Jack Carter Park, the city, um, you know, with, with, and the county does help, you know, um, do some stuff for that park, you know, at my request, because that's in my district. But that um, that park has been closed since the, the onset of the pandemic, and it's still closed. It's padlocked at every gate, and no one is allowed to go there. The signs are posted, and they hadn't come down since, you know. So, and that's and that's a basketball court as well. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, how would we police it? Well, on that particular court, it's not very difficult. We can lock the gates and it's okay. closed. So, you know, we're, we're, of course, most of our staff are located in that park. Mm -hmm. uh, maintenance staff, sports staff, administrative staff. So there are a lot of eyes 
on that very visible and you know it would be easy to to know when someone is violating the the, the mm -hmm. rule and um so it wouldn't be difficult to stop it on that one we have others now where there's no fence very difficult to stop mm. and so at those you would just re-sign you we had signage up uh yes sir we have put signs up numerous times mm -hmm. and um you know they don't like to stay there long, but uh, <laughs> we, we can, you know, continue to put them up. Yeah. Um, I don't want them to leave one park and go to the mm -hmm. court and go to the other courts, what I'm saying, you know. Well, and part of the issue uh, is is not necessarily our courts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all had all our courts closed initially mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I witnessed myself on several occasions, mm -hmm. there was a lot of activity going on at other courts in the county that we have no control over. So the, the irresponsible behavior is not, doesn't end, it's just moved away from our facility. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we need to do what we can do for our facilities, for sure, so. So it's just a matter of enforcing uh, what, I, what, what the ordinance already says. Am I right? There's nothing new that we're doing. Well, we, um, really, really, we don't have an ordinance that addresses the what, facilities what? as such, except you know what we did on the masking ordinance i think what you what you would do is just you know make the decision and say look we're going to back up mm -hmm. and and we've reassessed the accessibility functions at the rec and basically have determined it's not safe to have the basketball <coughs> courts open yeah just the basketball courts is that correct how, how about it about. how about the playgrounds uh we have similar issues there at times commissioner I, Fraser. I, I'm, I'm just saying like i mean I haven't. Th seen this this is before. this is this whole pandemic is new for everyone. Yeah, but you um, know, but Joe, uh, uh, Commissioner Frazier, Ms. Uh, Dr. Davis said they have come to the conclusion that the playground equipment is not as, lack of a better word, contagious or effective. Uh, it, it's the it's the aerosols you uh, emitting when you're playing. Though that that's mm -hmm. yeah. At first they were talking about playground equipment. They, they backed away from that. Yeah. You know? Now they're saying pretty again, much just a, again with all the respect. Mm -hmm. I really don't think you, you you can have one doctor say one thing and another doctor saying something else. Mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm saying is, I mean, from not just the equipment, mm -hmm. but with the children congregating. Mm -hmm. I mean, are, are we going to focus on that as well? Well, yeah, I think it's all a matter of social distancing. Basically, um, we can't they can't you you can't enforce the social distancing on any of those facilities. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a it's a it's a oh, matter right. of individuals taking that response, accepting that responsibility, and do it themselves. Right. I mean, you know, we can try to to enforce that. You know, the decision at the last last time was we do not to be involved in yeah. the enforcing of those mm -hmm. policies. Right, because I, I remember whenever first, uh, you know, this whole pandemic, and we were having these discussions about shutting down the facilities and what we should shut down and what we shut in and everything. And I mean. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I remember pretty, you know, and I've slept since then. But I remember that we talked about letting the people walk on the track, mm -hmm. and we were shutting everything else down. Pretty much. And we talked about it, and I understand. I mean, I live right around the corner, Jimmy, just like you do, and I seen it the other day. There was thirty-five or forty people there. I don't even know where they're parking at. Uh, Sides up there by your office. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, they got to like, come in that yeah, way. That's where they're parking at. I hate it more than anything, mm -hmm. but it's like Commissioner Gillard said, and and I can't even shoot a basketball. I mean, I never have ever played it, but I, I know that I see a lot of uh, you know head button and people pushing <laughs> and this that, and another, and I know you oh, can't. Yeah, man. You can't. They play to win. Yeah. Social distance, and and yeah. it's it is bad, and I think mm -hmm. the military is saying, hey. We know we can't do it out here on Fort Stewart, so we're gonna run uptown and do no, it. And, yeah. and my, yeah. my thing is, let's just yeah. go back to where we let's was at. Back. I hate the signs. I mean, I know I've seen them tore down and thrown out there next to the road. Commissioner Stevens has showed us things that's been wrote uh, profanity on the signs in the other places. Let's sign it, and um, if we can get the word to the city of Hinesville that it needs to be, I mean, they're supposed to be the ones policing some of the social distancing. Um, but if they can't, then you know we'll just have to do what we got to do, and that's put locks on yeah. it and tell them no. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know anything else to, to tell you. I just yeah. uh, 
when he when I think about that and, and what he's you know when he referred to part of where we were, we gave you a three step or we looked at as a group a three step implementation plan. One was that first phase of walking and, and stuff. The second was playgrounds, basketball courts, and things like that, which also include organized sports. And then the third would be complete opening. So I mean, I really just think what you're thinking about probably to be going safe is going back to stage two mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Chairman, Chairman, a motion. Correctly, stage one. Stage. I'm sorry, stage one. Chairman, I make a motion. We go ahead and let's, let's, let's lock it back up. Stage and, two? Uh, stage one, actually. There's one, actually. All right. You did a second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor? All right, that's where we are, sir. Uh, I did make a conversation with uh, a, a school board representative uh, about people using the school board's courts, so they're looking into that. But they did ask me if I could to if you just let Mr. Brown know which schools so they can kind of take a closer look at specific school courts. Okay. Uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, I, I heard on the news this morning before I went to work, and I mean, you know, the news source, the news is the news, and, um, you know, but um, they did say that the, um, the chances of um, catching the, the virus mm -hmm. is greater in Georgia than it is in any yeah. state in the Union. Yeah. I, I don't know what that means, mm -hmm. but um sounds kind of scary to me. It is. I, I rethink too, last. I, I rethink about when y'all went to stage two and you said we'll try it, mm -hmm. we'll see. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. We had to back up. Mm -hmm. So there was kind of a, I don't say warning there, but there was kind of look. If if it's not going to work, we're going to have to take the safety measures. So, you know, and, 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 and Jimmy made that statement. Y'all did a good job with the swimming program. What you tried to do this year, and I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Heard a lot of good comments about it. I mean, I know it was tried, and but you know we. We did try to offer something out there, um, but I, this thing here is um, is going to get out of hand, like Commissioner Gillard said. I think they said Cherokee County is one of the, mm -hmm. uh, it's the it worst is. one in the state right now. It it's is. getting worse and worse, but let's well, yeah. do what we can to help our folks. Yeah. Um, I, I know two, two day, uh Wednesday, I think it was, I, I went to Swainsboro um, to do a proposal, um, to help with a proposal. And every restaurant in Swainsboro is closed. Really? Mm. Ride yeah. through only. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I mean, we're we're not to that point here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I mean, we mm -mm. we were, mm -mm. the guys that I met. We were just trying to find a place just to sit there and get our plan together. Mm -hmm. um, just drive through. <laughs> that, that's all it was. Yeah. Just back two trucks up together and open up. That's what we did. Yeah. That's what we did. So, <laughs> so just to clarify a little bit, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're reverting to stage phase one, mm -hmm. which was only allowing basically individuals or family units to utilize the parks for individual exercise, mm -hmm. walking, jogging, mm -hmm. riding a bicycle, um, do away with the outdoor facility rentals that we had been allowing. Mm -hmm. uh, swimming pools are closed, so mm -hmm. no issue there. A uh, number of the facilities we have been allowing use of, like basketball courts, ball fields, batting cages, et cetera, those, those will go back to being closed again. Yes, sir. Okay. Until such time. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Even though we're going to get the air conditioning fixed down, we, we're still going to close <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. And that would also include, like, baseball teams, softball teams, people that want to rent the sure. fields and use those for practice wouldn't be able to do Correct. that. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -mm. Mr. Brown. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Where are we at with the air conditioning for the complex? So um, you've got the Schumann Center in here. You've got uh, the ambulance is in here tonight. Joey, <laughs> Joey. We've, been work, we've been working on it. We had Joey, if you will, yes, sir. let's go ahead and do the Schumann and put that in there. Isn't that part of your report for the complex? If not, make it part of your report. Okay, <laughs> let's let's go ahead and get the Schumann taken care of. It will come. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hold on, Jim. You, you got to make sure you get your air condition for the. <laughs> I'm counting on Mr. Mosley for that. Go ahead, sir. We was presenting. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, at the July 7th commission meeting, uh, Mr. Brown shared with y'all that we were in the process of listing our proposals for our HVAC system. We sent it out to seven vendors. Uh, two responded. Uh, if you look at the. Um, if you go into the attached um, sheet, uh, the two vendors were Mark Plumbing and Mechanical, 
and the site company. And one of the requirements for the cost of this project was over 100,000 was a bid. Uh, the site company failed to submit a bid, so we did not uh, review them any further. But the mock uh, plumbing out of Savannah did submit a bid in the amount of $215,381. Uh, the four panel uh, review team reviewed it and thought that it was a good proposal and recommended that the Board of Commissioners award this to uh, mock plumbing and mechanical. Just, I guess, as a tag along, we've had experience with Mott uh, through some through some processes, and so we feel real good about them. Again, it was a bid bond; it wasn't submitted. So, you know, they, their their proposal really or bid couldn't be considered under state law. Yeah. Um, this does involve some redoing of some ductwork down there. These units are basically being taken off the roof, the old units, and you're going to have uh, units on the ground basically. So you'll have. Uh, exposed duct on the outside that will run in to power the duct on the inside. So it's a combination of old duct, new duct, removal of old systems off the roof, putting them on the ground, um, and much more efficient units. So that will get that facility back up to 100% and, and running well. We did uh, engage a mechanical engineer to help us with that restructure to make sure we had the right BTUs and everything for the building. So, you know, we actually did a set of specifications. Actually, Buckley and those will help us with mechanical engineering oversight to make sure it's installed properly and everything. Now we're looking at Schumann Center. That's mm -hmm. right. This is the Schum this is the gym at the Schumann Center. Mm -hmm. Right. It had been limping along. I think originally it had four units in there. Uh, and slowly over time they started to go down. And um, they so went we're we're good now at Stafford Park. The pavilion there, that air conditioner that was out, Jimmy. How? Um, so I know Staff Commissioner Fraser said that there was one there that was not working. The wall unit. Yes, Stafford Pavilion, those four units in that facility are working. Okay. And, and they're wall units, right. not very complicated to repair or either replace. Okay. That's, that was all. I just want to make sure that we, this is, don't have anything to do them with our Midway complex. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mosley, yes, sir. observations, uh, I, I, you're, Jay Johnson, that's Jerry Johnson here? Yes, sir. He, he, he gave it the lowest score, and he, he's, he's a maintenance man. Right. So when the maintenance man <laughs> scores low, it's kind of either he's just a tough cookie or. Well, no, no, no. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> he's a tough cookie. So, so, so in, in the arbitrary scoring process, you generally find people that are low on the low scale yeah. for everybody, and you yeah. find people that say, well, you know, th this, this guy looks the best, everybody else falls below. He gets 100, and everybody's at 90 and 80 and 70, so mm. the average. It's his scoring methodology. All right. I didn't mean but, anything really against but, the but, uh, overall. But, <laughs> Chairman, I, I was looking at uh, on both of these yep. um, proposals, um, <laughs> Mosley goes a little hot on the high side. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> This <laughs> liberal county here, now we 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 liberal on the conservative side. <laughs> uh, better stick with Jerry. <laughs> yeah, the, the man. Uh, with, the man all with, I can say is, the man with the it, tool belt. Need to fix while well it's empty. Mm -hmm. and right now they're empty. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything's yeah. empty. So this. Okay. okay. All right, chair, take a motion. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right, motion second. We approve the bid from Mark. Duly noted, Mr. Moses' high score and Mr. Johnson's low score. <laughs> and we all know exactly who to turn to when it goes wrong. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All in favor. <laughs> okay. That's a vote. All right. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, do right, do let Mr. Brown know about those school observations, because I mm -hmm. promised the school board we would help them with that. Yes, sir. Yes, we will. Because yeah. no. we don't want to leave an out court going to the. It's, it's an easy answer, all of them. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Now, you're going to put the locks on tonight or in the morning? Uh, can I have till in the morning? Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Lock All them right. up tomorrow. Thank you. All right, Mr. Brown, as a popular administrative report, you'll include the complex in there, so we appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. And, and could, if Mr. Davis is here, I know. Oh, he, I'm sorry. I forgot. No, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm cognizant of him uh, <laughs> down there on the phone. Convalescent. If, if Kelly's still here, if you had anything else on the governor's order update. Uh, no, you know, I mentioned that the uh, enforceability of auto, our order was confirmed by the governor. But he also did authorize local local governments to impose uh, local option face covering requirements. Uh, as most of you know, however, it's conditioned upon local governments meeting certain requirements. The two biggest of those requirements are the first, the local government has to uh, meet a certain threshold requirement as far as the, the prevalence of uh, 
coronavirus in its community. But pretty much every every community in Georgia satisfies those requirements. Uh, but the requirement is that uh, you have to have at least 100 cases per 100,000 within the last two weeks, uh, which Liberty County, and I think most every other jurisdiction in the county satisfies, with the exception of one or two. Uh, the second biggest condition is that to the extent you require a face mask on private property, the owners of those properties, such as businesses, have to consent to the uh, the mask requirement. So essentially, it's you know, it's, a, it's a more formal version of the voluntary requirement, uh, but you know it does give both governments the right to impose these requirements. But to the extent you try to enforce them on private property, they will be enforced to the extent that those private property has consent to the requirements. Uh, and you do that by posting a sign. Also, other significant conditions. So I'll just list a few. But uh, it cannot be enforced on uh, residences or residential property. Uh, penalties are graduated. You first, much like our proposed ordinance, you try to caution citizens to wear a mask, and if they don't, they're subject to a penalty, but it can't be in excess of fifty dollars per offense. And significantly, businesses can't be punished uh, for failure to um, comply with the mask requirement because, as I mentioned, it's voluntary. Only individuals who refuse to wear masks can be are subject to, to penalty. Uh, and there are other requirements I can go into them if you'd like, but uh, just a general update. The governor did uh, authorize local governments to impose uh, mask requirements on private property, but it's heavily conditioned. And that's pretty much it. Any, any questions, Mr. Davis, on that? No. You want to update us on the Mr. Odafilo's report, sir? What's that? Phil Odom's report. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, just in, I think Mr. Odom provided uh, a memo giving the Board of Commissioners an update on the progress of the Monument, Monument Committee. We have been working with them, and they've made significant progress not only in research regarding ownership of the monument, but in, uh, in the consideration of different alternatives regarding disposition of the, of the monument. But they thought it appropriate before they made a final recommendation to the Board there be some sort of formal public comment period. So I think it's the, uh, the wishes of the committee that they schedule a meeting in the next week or two uh, and put public notice of that meeting in the Coastal Courier on the county's website and let the public know that they're invited to, to join the meeting remotely, you know, via the video service or by telephone, and just make known their concerns or, or thoughts regarding the, uh, the future of the monument. So I think they'll be scheduling that formal comment period soon, and when they do, we'll let the commissioners know when that might be. But the public will be invited to, to comment on the on the audience future. And then once that do, that's done, they will uh, make a, a formal presentation and recommendation to the board. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I do have one question. If you want to back up to the. Um what Kelly was saying about the, the, the mass ordinance, uh, mm -hmm. he was saying what the governor said. Um, so w w what does that do? I mean, you know, last month we said we we said that we wouldn't, that we couldn't enforce it because it wasn't a state mandate. Mm -hmm. And what Kelly just said, what, what I mean, that, that doesn't change anything that, that was voted on up here, does it? Yeah. Well, we, we can enforce it in, on our properties. Well, that's what we were doing in how Yeah, and, and importantly, I guess I should make that clear. You know, those conditions that I mentioned, the requirements, particularly the threshold requirement, those don't apply to county-owned property. You know, governor simply acknowledged that, you know, local governments have the right to control their own property, and we can impose whatever reasonable restrictions we, we would like. Uh, with respect to the county property currently, you require temperature screening and uh, face coverings unless you meet uh, or satisfy one of the exceptions. And so uh, the governor specifically authorized and acknowledged that those were enforceable. Um, but all the, all the conditions I mentioned, which are, are numerous, uh, those apply to uh, face, mask, face, mask, face mask mandates on private property. But yes, you can impose it, and if the government's consent, it can be enforced. Mm. So business's consent, excuse me. The business has consent, right. Yeah. So, so it's, so it's kind of, how do you say it? We, we can enforce it in unincorporated Liberty County, let's just say for 
a convenience store, but that convenience store has to agree that they would also yeah. mandate that people. That's, that. that's right. Yeah. And as a practical matter, it probably wouldn't change the, you know, the, the current uh, requirements of businesses regarding face masks. Because you know, many businesses always already require that customers wear face masks. I guess this, what this might do is give businesses uh, further leverage yeah. with respect to their customers. You know, they can point to the fact that the mm -hmm. government has mm -hmm. um, required this and it, it provides a little more enforcement authority. Yeah. Now, the extent to which we can enforce that, you know, I doubt if we would go into a business to uh, cite someone uh, unless there was a public disturbance, but it gives us that, uh, that opportunity mm -hmm. and perhaps, perhaps gives local businesses some additional cover with respect to the customers. I, don't, I agree with you. Not, not enough to redo what we've done. I agree. Okay. Yeah. So, if you, so, so really, if you passed it, it would just be enforceable on the street, so to speak, in public places, not private places, right? Yes. Oh, and, and, and you know, really, our current you know face mask ordinance already covers you know quote unquote public places. You know, it's basically any, any any public area that's owned or controlled by us, um, and so. Um, yes. So I, I think with respect to public property, it wouldn't change anything significantly. Mm -hmm. But the only effect this would have would be uh, to the extent that private property is consent, it can be enforced in their property. All right. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Hope you feel better. Ms. Brown? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be real quick. Uh, just in my report, first to jump to the East End Complex. Um, that was a project that's actually we've solicited bids three times on. <laughs> begging for bids. And begging for people. We actually have uh, done that. Uh, and this last time we got it, you'll have to help me remember because it came across my desk today. But we got how many bids? Three bids this time. Did Mr. Mosley score? <laughs> uh, we, we're meeting actually to try to score those tomorrow. So okay. Okay. we'll bring the higher score in the room. He's already here. Hey. I'll get in the middle to balance. Well, well, I, 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 um, we'll have the low one. I, I'm, not a, I, I'm not a gambling man, but I, I bet you Mosley Got the high, get the high score. <laughs> just based on what I've seen. Just so like he been a little man this hey, time. I'll, he will. He'll, now, now he's going to really bear down. <laughs> hey, I, hey. Be honest. You're just being honest. That's right. Give him that high score. Mr. <laughs> hey, Gilly. Hey, he, he's the one at the slam dunk contest mm -hmm. that always sold up the 10. Hold up the 10. <laughs> <laughs> No matter what, eh? yeah. regardless, it's a tick. So the good news is make it we, we do have what we think are three good Well, I'm glad. And we'll score those and have those ready at your next meeting. Yeah. Uh, so that we can kick those out. That's replacement of one unit mm -hmm. down there, one of the two 10 tons. So, uh, I'm kind of like Commissioner Walton. Let's get those things in while nobody's in those buildings. Yeah, it, is, yeah. it is. Of course, yeah. you know, with the with the voting and everything that's going on, yeah. you got delivery time on this. I hadn't actually looked into the packets that we got, but yeah. um, you got delivery time on that. I'm guessing it's probably, you know, yeah, 90 you're days. Running close. Yeah. That's going to take. So we'll probably end up with some temp units again. Mm -hmm. Didn't work very well mm -hmm. uh, during the elections. Okay. Uh, to do I that. missed all of that, Joey. I'm sorry I went out, but what, what kind of units you plan on going back with? Temporary. Uh, no, no. For the uh, election? The, I was talking about the temporary units for voting right. that we'd have to use Definitely. again. The, the new units, I had looked at what's proposed. It had to be, there were four brands, I think, that were specified uh, in there. It's most likely, a, it's a carrier or equivalent type unit because that is the electronics that's in there now, and none of that's getting replaced. And the carrier was was the brand that was on the floor already. So most likely, it's a carrier replacement. Uh, uh, ten ton. It's a ten ton. I guess got mixed emotions about that. I'll, I'll be real honest with you. I think that the units that are Jimmy was talking about those wall units are the easiest things to replace and to work on. And I don't know that it wouldn't be better to to go in there and put. Um, three or four of those in. I don't know. I, I guess we've had an engineer look at it. Yes, sir. Electrical engineer? Me mechanical, yes, sir. Who is that? Mechanical engineer out of Savannah. All right. And who was he? I, I want to think it was maybe Saucy Engineering. Well. And then, of course, you know, what he's doing is, is here's the problem is that it's, it's two split units, so you got two 10 tons on the ground. Uh, number one, I'm not sure 
the only place you could put those units if you went back to those low efficiency units would be to put them all on one bank of walls, this exterior on the front, because that's the only exterior wall that you've got in there. And those mm -hmm. those barred, we call barred units, but those barred units all have a have to vent to the outside. To the outside. And well, you're very, you're, I think in this situation, you're very much better to go back with uh, with, with the type of setup you've got. What's the name of that, the, the engineer, what you say? Saucy. It's Saucy. Saucy Engineering, and, and Saucy is an what, what, what's, the sure. what's the score on him, Mosley? <laughs> 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 yeah, I get he's a mechanical engineer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm -mm. I, I'm going to leave Mosley alone. Leave him alone. Okay. okay. All right. He's anyway, that's the good news. We'll, we'll yeah. bring those to you, and, and, I, and I will have. Uh, well, I'm glad you finally got some bids. Good. Um, we did also, uh, as you know, we've got an insurance broker. Uh, Martin Insurance actually works through Seville out of Atlanta that reshopped our insurance this year for all our property and casualty and general liability. Um, good news is the market average for increases, especially for places on the coast was somewhere in excess of 20% because of, of changes of, that the hurricanes have brought on and what insurance companies are doing. Uh, bad news is it did go up. Uh, it went up by about 7%, which, which is not bad. I think we projected for about a 10% increase uh, in the budget, maybe five, 5 or 10. We'll have to go back and look um, to, to see about that. But most of the increase was brought on by um, some claims data that was in there for number of automobile claims and things that were had, uh, some market increase. But also you have to remember that we change out equipment. So um, on our inland marine, which is sounds boaty, but it's really not, it's the across the road heavy equipment. On, on that inland marine coverage and stuff, uh, you've upgraded to some newer units as we've done it. So all that rolls in. So comparatively, all rolled together, it's about a 7% increase. Overall, not bad, uh, not bad at all. When you consider that your insurance lines of coverage are somewhere around, you know, $650,000 a year. That's all property, all buildings, all rolling stock, and all of your general liability that covers everybody, including sheriffs and, and law enforcement and everything. That's also cyber coverage uh, that you get for cyber attacks. And if you remember, we had one of those a couple of years ago, so we had to pull in the cyber insurance. So it's a, it's a full package deal, R really not a bad rate. But she did shop, I think there were actually three companies you know, that's limited to um, some that'll take us and some won't and some of those type of things. But she, there were about three providers that rolled in together that do those different lines. And, and so I wanted to let you know that. Um, other thing is, um, there are a few people leaving, by the way. <laughs> uh, one of those is Miss Evelyn. And so this is in here. I can, I think she knows about it. So we won't. But, uh, we're having a going away get together. It's, and I like the way that everybody's come together and kind of put this Tim and I are talking about a walkthrough celebration. And so uh, it'll be held in here on August 27th from 4 to 5. And uh, it, it, it'll, it'll be a walk and speak and go. It'll be a grab bag uh, that these folks are putting together. I mean, I'm kind of excited about it. That's a pretty neat concept to find a way to do stuff in COVID. Uh, other thing, and it's a good news piece, uh, is that Isle of Wight. Uh, ribbon cutting that is on the 28th, which is next week at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I'm hoping everybody will come there. That is a great thing that y'all accomplished. Um, I think he in his report, apologize, had to step Let out on some right logistical you. stuff, but uh, the island station is still on track. Everything's good there. And so uh, we'll look at some kind of opening ceremony for that, hopefully in November, okay. which is all good. Is that it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all, sir? That's all, sir. That's all, sir. Do, uh, we didn't have the executive. Anything else for the good of the order? We do have an executive session uh, just for personnel real quick. Yes, we do. Do you have anything else? Thank you remind me of that. It's great that one of my friends died. All right. Chair, I'm a motion to, to go out of our regular session to executive session oh, for personnel. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? We're not going out of regular session and executive session to discuss personnel.
mics up. Close me. All right, so. Ready? I ain't going to tell him. Right, Chair, I'm obtaining a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Right. Aye. There'll be nothing to report. Chair, I'm obtaining a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Man, I got you, Justin. I got you.